Greetings of the day and a very warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Aviation Safety India is happy to present before you another aviation safety related video on wildlife hazards to aviation. Birds and animal strikes have been responsible for large number of accidents worldwide. Hence, we decided to prepare a video presentation on this important safety concern to refresh and enhance the knowledge and awareness of the pilots, operators, airport management, and air traffic controllers. I'm sure you'll find this video interesting and useful. So here we go. Bird strike is quite common and can pose a significant threat to sa the safety of the aircraft, helicopters, and drones. Bird strikes may occur during any phase of flight, but are most likely during the takeoff, initial climb, approach, and landing phases due to the presence of large number of birds at lower levels. Since most birds fly mainly during the day, most bird strikes occur in daylight hours and very rarely during night. There have been number of crashes or serious accidents due to birds and animal strikes around the world. The failure of both the engines due to bird ingestion led to the landing of the U.S. Airways aircraft in Hudson River, New York, and Russian airline in a cornfield after takeoff. Bird hit caused the crash of one of the helicopter while operating at West Moon Navy. Collision with Buffalo at Surat Airport caused serious damage to the aircraft on takeoff road. The speed of the aircraft and engine speed at the time of bird hit is the prime determining factor in level of damage resulting from a collision. Please remember 20% increase in speed results in a 44% increase in impact force. Higher the speed, higher will be the damage to the aircraft oblique helicopter. Vegetation growth, agriculture activity, garbage dumps, remains of the dead animals, location of butteries, ponds, coastal areas, etc., on or in the vicinity of an airport, attract birds and pose serious threat of bird or animal strike. Migrating birds often follow well-defined flight paths in considerable numbers. These birds can pose a serious hazard if the flight paths of the migratory birds are near an airport. Bats too pose risk to the safety of the flight during dawn and dusk hours at airports like HL, Bangalore, etc. Now, how can a pilot detect a bird strike while in flight? First of all, it is visual. If the pilots had seen birds in close proximity to the aircraft, oblique helicopter, or seen it colliding with the aeroplane, birds remain are on windshield and cracked windshields. Then tactile. 
tactile is vibration of airframe or engine thrust loss asymmetric thrust increased drag abnormal airplane handling characteristics then auditory noise of strike or noise attributed to resulting damage that is engine surging compressor stalls aerodynamic noise from damaged radome loss of pressurization now engine indications it may be reduction or fluctuation in primary power parameters like engine pressure ratio, fan speed or equivalent, abnormal fuel flow, abnormal engine vibration, engine failure and engine accidents. Then from flight instruments, loss of data or erroneous indications arising from damage to air data sensors or angle of attack sensors. Other airplane systems or structure affected directly by a strike, it may be damage, communication or navigation antennas, damage to hydraulic lines, damage radome or weather radar, broken landing lights, cascading and multiple effects from sensor damage or engine damage. Now we'll discuss the responses of the pilots to a known or suspected bird strike. First, the immediate actions. Most important, for the pilot, it would remember that if there is a bird strike, they should not panic. They must fly the aircraft public helicopter and maintain flight path control. Thereafter, they must monitor flight and engine parameters. And if required, attempt to restart engine or engines if situation permits. In case of severe engine damage, it is advisable to shut down engine according to the procedures. If there are strong engine vibration, then pilots must reduce the thrust, which will reduce vibration and shut down engine as per flight crew operations manuals guidance. If there is a multiple engine ingestion and abnormal engine indications. In this case, the pilot must return to departure base or divert to nearest suitable airport. Known or suspected multiple engine ingestion with normal engine indications. Pilots should return to departure base or divert to nearest suitable airport. They must re-evaluate decision to continue with extended range twin engine operational performance standards, extended range operations or over water flight because engine damage or performance degradation may manifest later in the flight. Known or suspected strikes with large flocking birds. In this case, the pilot must return to departure base or divert to nearest suitable airport since the damage may affect aerodynamic lift and drag, subsequent fuel consumption, and ability to complete the flight safely. 
known or suspected airframe damage or engine damage. In this case, pilots must maintain or reduce speed. They should not accelerate unless necessary for the safety of the flight or to maintain flight path control. Then in case of damage, windshield or depressurization, if the aircraft is below 10,000 feet, the pilots must discontinue climb and level off. Above 10,000 feet, it is advisable to descend to 10,000 feet or the minimum safe altitude. Now, in the event of known or suspected strike with landing gear extended, or in takeoff or landing configuration with high lift deployed. In this case, pilots must use available system information to assess possible damage to flight controls and high lift devices. Now, if there's a known or suspected strikes to air data and angle of attack sensors. In this case, the pilot should appreciate that this may affect other airplane systems and have cascading effects of the potential for loss or erroneous air data and degraded flight control modes, including loss of envelope protection or limiting unreliable airspeed propulsion system in alternate mode. If there's a bird strike during takeoff, now if birds or other wildlife are noted on or near the runway or departure path, then pilots either they should use another runway not affected by the birds, or they should delay takeoff until the birds have been dispersed by airport personnel. If a bird strike occurs during the takeoff roll, the decision to continue or abort the takeoff should be based upon your SOPs. During initial climb, if departing from an airport with known bird problems or reported bird problems, climbing on the IKO noise abatement departure profile one will minimize the time and reduce the distance traveled to reach 3000 feet AGL. If encountering birds, the pilots must pull up since the birds generally tend to turn away or dive when confronted with an aircraft. Pulling up maneuver will help the pilots to pass over the birds. And pilots must reduce their speed to minimize impact damage and limit flight below 3,000 feet. Encounters with flocking birds can result in damage that affects multiple systems, which may include engine, public engine power loss, flight instrument, oblique flight computer malfunction due to pitot tube damage, windshield damage, nose wheel steering loss, penetration of fuselage and flap oblique slat damage. Pilots must be aware that engine damage from bird ingestion can be difficult to detect 
with aircraft instrumentation alone. After a bird strike, pilots must carefully evaluate the condition of their aircraft, public helicopter, and engine engines prior to deciding to continue their flight. A return for precautionary inspection is recommended in case bird hit has been suspected. If pilots are operating in an area of non-bird activity, they must use safe operating speeds during climb. If pilots are operating in an area of non-bird activity, they must slow down. Slowing the aircraft will reduce the impact force and probability of damage in a collision. Below 10,000 feet, pilots should not exceed 250 knots, indicating their speed or minimum clean speed, whichever is greater. During descent, approach, and landing. If you are landing at an airport with non bird problems, then please try to remain at or about 3,000 feet AGL until necessary to descend on the normal three degree descent profile for landing. If birds are reported on or near your landing runway, pilots must request a different runway not affected by the birds or delay landing until the birds are dispersed by airport personnel. At approach thrust settings, ingested birds may bypass the engine core via the fan reducing the likelihood of serious damage. However, if birds are encountered at approach thrust settings and landing can be made with the thrust setting, pilots must continue through the flock and complete the landing. Opening power during a go-round is more likely to result in serious engine damage and loss of thrust. Pilots must be ready to transition to instrument flight if wind shields become obscured. Upon landing after a bird strike, pilots must minimize the use of reverse thrust to lower the risk of engine damage caused by bird ingestion. Pilots also must keep a force landing field state head in mind if both engines are lost due bird ingestion. Then bird heads to helicopters. Now helicopters are most susceptible to bird strikes since most of the helicopter operations are conducted at low altitudes below 3,000 feet. However, better forward visibility and slow speeds of helicopters help the pilots in detecting and avoiding bird in time. However, if the helicopter pilots are not situationally aware and vigilant, while flying in areas and altitudes of non-bird activity, a bird hit may occur, leading to serious damage to the helicopter and even crash. Bird hits may cause serious damage to main rotor, tail rotor, engines, control surfaces, and the windshield. In some of the bird hits on the windshield, the pilots have been blinded due to the bird remains hitting the pilot's face 
with consequent incapacitation. Most of the helicopter crashes after suffering a bird strike have been due to panic reaction or incapacitation of the pilots. The recommended immediate action in case of bird hit by the helicopter pilots is not to panic, reduce speed in case of vibrations, fly the helicopter and land at any suitable site or nearest helipad or airport. Now, port flight also is equally important. Maintenance protocols should be in place to inspect engines and airframe after a bird strike. This is the responsibility of the operator. If a bird strike is suspected, pilots must ensure a maintenance logbook entry is made describing the event in detail. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusions, I would like to inform you that bird strikes are quite common and they can be a significant threat to aircraft public helicopter safety. On an average, two birds public animal strikes take place in India almost every day. Rate of bird strikes are highest at Ahmedabad, followed by Goa, Delhi, Chennai, Kolkata, Mumbai, Hyderabad, and Bangalore Airport. Pilots must exercise extreme caution while operating to and from these airports, particularly at Ahmedabad. Birds do not regard aircraft on a runway, either with or without illuminated lights or the spooling of a jet engine as a threat. They'll be unlikely to move until you start your takeoff roll, which will in most cases be too late to avoid collision. Pilots should not rely on-board weather radar, landing lights, airplane markings, time of the day, or visibility to prevent bird strikes. Bird strikes occur mainly during day and rarely during night at low heights, that is below 3,000 feet AGL, during the takeoff initial climb, approach, and landing phases. This does not mean <clears throat> that bird strike cannot occur above 3,000 feet. Pilots must be very alert and vigilant while flying below 3,000 feet since 95% of the bird strike takes place below 3,000 feet. Pilots should be aware about the migratory bird seasons, species, flight routes, and altitude, etc. They should be knowledgeable about notams, airport briefing notes, and aeronautical information publication for bird public wildlife warnings for departure and arrival airports, as well as during climb and descent routes. For smaller aircraft and helicopters, significant damage may be caused to the structure due to bird strike. All turbojet aircraft and helicopters are vulnerable to the loss of thrust, which can follow the ingestion of birds into engine air intakes. Whenever the birds are reported on final approach, pilots must be very careful during approach. 
E-birds are expected on final approach. Pilots must plan additional landing distance requirement to account for the possibility of no thrust reversal due if a bird strike occurs. Sound knowledge, better situational awareness, adherence to the SOPs, operational guidelines, and alertness, particularly during flight in known areas, seasons, or airports of heavy bird activity, will definitely keep the bird related incident, oblique accidents to the aircraft and helicopters to the minimum. Involvement of the operators is very essential to reduce the bird strikes. It is the responsibility of the operators to ensure suitable SOP for the bird strike for different phases of the flight. And before commencing the flight, the pilots should be properly informed about known bird hazards which may affect them. Pilots must descend with idle power and avoid extended low altitude level flight, particularly on water courses, nature reserves, or other areas of known or expected bird activity. The Ministry of Civil Aviation and the Directorate General of Civil Aviation have recognized wildlife strikes, including bird and animal hits to aircraft as one of the state safety priority. Out of 2,156 occurrences during the year 2018, 1,325 occurrences were due to wildlife strike. Regular vegetation clearance, proper garbage disposal, relocating the butteries, discouraging the plantation of fruit bearing trees or crops which attract birds, installation of bird surveillance and detection radars, good condition of the boundary walls and the involvement of the airport management, air traffic control, operators and the pilots can go a long way in ensuring wildlife hazard risk mitigation. I'm very grateful to you all ladies and gentlemen for finding time to watch this video presentation. Hope you found the video useful and will be in a better position to mitigate the risk related to the birds and animal strikes. Please do share with your friends and colleagues. Remember, sharing is caring. Wishing you all happy and safe flying and many, many happy landings. Jai Hind!